It's pretty amazing that the eels that we have here in Atlantic Canada and, and anywhere in North America originate from the same place. Down in the southern Atlantic in the uh, Sargasso Sea, Bermuda Triangle area. All the eels that we have um, come from there. We don't really know a lot about what happens. It's a bit of a mystery, but they're starting to do some tagging studies to follow eels to that, uh, that point of migration. In the fall, uh, from our region here, they migrate down, their eggs are released. So it's external fertilization and all the eels sort of get together and it's called panmixis. They hatch in the winter as leptocephalus, leptocephali, and that just basically means a leaf-shaped larvae. They're transparent, they look um, just like leaves and they float along the ocean's currents. At this stage, they're not actually feeding with their mouths. They take all of their nutrition through absorption. So they have a large surface area to, to be able to eat things in the water column. The leptocephalus stage, it lasts for up to a year, depending on where the leptocephalus gets carried to uh, by the currents. As soon as they start approaching the inland waters, they begin to transform from that leaf, clear leaf-like shape into glass eels. They're very clear and they're glass-like, which is where the term comes from, the glass eel. Basically an eel-like shape, but completely transparent. They're still very tiny, uh, so at, at the glass eel stage, they la lack pigment, but they're starting to make this metamorphosis into more of an adult shape. Once they start going into the freshwater, then they start developing their pigments, and then they're, they're known as the elvers. We define elvers as anything that's um, pigmented and usually up to about 10 or 15 centimeters in length. So right now they're developing color, and they're usually hiding around uh, different types of habitats such as eelgrass. There is a, a bit of confusion as to what the pigmentation really indicates. It seems to possibly just be a, a response to rising water temperatures in the uh, uh, in the course of the summer. At about 15 centimeters, they're still that pigment and, and typical eel shape. They start to take on a yellow hue on their underbelly, so there's, they're, they then would be called yellow eels. The yellow eel is the stage that they spend the majority of their life at. And yellow eels then migrate a little bit further up into freshwater systems. One of the neat things about how they come into the rivers is that they seem to ride in on the, on the incoming tide and then when the tide starts to ebb and flow back, they settle down into the substrate and uh, wait out the, the outgoing tide and then come in on the next tide. They may remain in those freshwater systems for up to 42 years was the oldest age of a, uh, an eel found to date in Nova Scotia. This would be typical in size of the yellow eels that we get in our crayfish traps probably about 30, well, about 40 centimeters long. The largest one that we captured was over 900 millimeters and weighed 1.5 kilograms. It was uh, aged at being 18, so it wasn't the oldest. It was the largest, but not the oldest. And in Bredore, we've had eels here 19, as old as 19 years old. Once they, they sort of uh, mature into their final stage as adults, uh, they're known as silver eels. So they start to change their color. So they go from having a yellow underbelly and a dark color on the surface, like the dorsal side, to more silvery or gray. We're not sure how long they stay in the silver eel stage. Um, it's more of a process, it's not, it's not black and white. They start to develop silvering patterns, uh, develop a coppery sheen. We're not exactly sure why, what times them to leave the, the estuaries to make the migration back. But their eyes get larger, their stomach starts to um, retract and get smaller, and then they migrate. We know it's a one-way ticket because their um, internal organs start to atrophy. They're not feeding at that stage anymore, so they're basically making their, um, putting all of their energy into a very lengthy migration for fertilization. So how they get back to the Sargasso Sea, barely feeding or able to feed, is a real big question. Mm -hmm.